What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another entry into our testing ground series where we take a look at some new kind of unrefined rough deck ideas revolving around new cards that set gives us and we try them out to see what might have some potential. So of course this is going to be the first entry into our Forbidden Light testing grounds uh, videos. So here on the left you actually have yours truly. I'm going to be on the left playing Ultra Necrozma Malamar. Definitely I think one of the more hype new archetypes to come out of this set. And then over on the right we have actually Brandon Miesmer. He's a local player from my area. Area who is nice enough to uh, help me out with making this video. He's actually going to be playing Zorark GX Greninja GX over there on the right. So hopefully this should be a pretty interesting matchup. Uh, both decks kind of revolve around taking one hit knockouts. So uh, on paper I feel like this should be kind of 50-50-ish. So with this Ultra Necrozma deck basically you're discarding your energy every turn to do huge amounts of damage. And over there on the right uh, with Greninja GX and Zorark. Zorark normally does like 120 to 150 depending on if you have a choice ban. But with the Frogadiers and Greninja GX and things like Professor Kukui, Brandon has a lot of ways at amplifying his damage output to also push Zorark into the realm of taking one hit knockouts as well. Okay, so we're just getting set up now, and it looks like I did get to go first, so that's definitely fun. So I'm going to be able to play Ultra Ball here and start getting set up. So I'm going to get rid of a Choice Band and a Professor Sycamore, no doubt going for Tapu Lele GX. Uh, probably to try to grab that first turn Bridget, it definitely seems like. Uh, kind of the best play here on your first turn. So I'm going to go for the Bridget as expected and kind of uh, the strategy of this deck is very similar to the old school Rayquaza Electric deck or even some of the old Bronzong decks from the XY era as well. Uh, basically Ultra Necrozma GX, if you guys are unfamiliar with it, it does, well you discard all basic psychic energy attached to it and it does 20 plus 80 more for each psychic energy discarded in this way. And then the Malamar in the deck, it's a stage one, but it has an ability, it lets you attach a psychic energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. So that's pretty nice. Every turn you're basically trying to nuke your opponent and take one hit knockouts. And then your Malamars just get the energy right back onto the field. So definitely want to get a few in case and then another Ultra Necrozma. And it looks like Brandon has a Tapu Lele GX of his own. So no doubt he's going to be going for that first turn Bridget. That way he can start getting set up as well. And of course Zora Arc GX you guys are probably plenty familiar with it. But in case you're not it has that riotous beating attack just for a double colorless energy. 20 for every Pokemon you have in play. So he definitely wants to play that first turn Bridget to allow him to search out some basic Pokemon. Uh, to start fueling up his Zora Arc's attacks. Uh, that way he can start getting set up and do more damage. So here it looks like he's going to grab uh, two Zerua and then one Froki, kind of prioritizing the Zeruas just because he knows how powerful Trade is. It's an ability on Zorark GX, lets you discard a card from your hand and draw two cards. But here he actually has the second Froki in hand, so super, super strong start from Brandon here. And uh, I'm just going to play N. Now on the first turn I did have the option of discarding the N with Ultra Ball. Uh, instead of Sycamore, but I think I had Rescue Stretcher and Super Odd in my hand. So if we had discarded the N and played Sycamore this turn, would have had to have discarded both recovery cards in the deck, which definitely would not have been fun. So better just to uh, play the N and refresh both of our hands. We both draw equal to the amount of prize cards that we have left. And here I have Metal Energy, which is which is nice. Uh, unfortunately, Ultra Necrozma's attack does require one Metal Energy to also use it. Um, so we do need to get one of those down, but unfortunately I don't have any Psychic Energy to discard. Have the Ultra Ball, and uh, you know, I'd prefer to have Psychic Energy to throw away, that way we can get out Malamar and get back on the field. But here I'm just going to have to pass, I think. And then Brandon, he's going to play a Cynthia. Now he did have a Zoroark GX in his hand last turn before I end him, so I'm sure he's not happy about uh, losing that, but luckily he does still have a draw supporter, so uh, he's still definitely in this game. And here he has an Ultra Ball, also has a Frogadier. He's going to put two damage counters on the Ultra Necrozma on the bench. Uh, so if you guys are not familiar with Frogadier and Greninja GX, very similar to the old Crobat Evolution line. Uh, Frogadier, whenever you evolve into it from your hand, you get to place two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. And similarly, Greninja also places three when you evolve into it. Uh, and also has some kind of decent attacks as well. But we're mainly playing the Greninja line for its abilities here. And here I'm playing Ultra Ball, but here I'm kind of second guessing what I want to discard. Uh, instead of discarding, yeah, I definitely want to put the Metal Energy in the discard. That way I can actually play Super Odd and put it back into the deck. 
So you're gonna get out Malamar. And one thing that's also important to note, guys, you know, this is uh, you know kind of just a game for fun. So me and Brandon, we're not gonna be too strict uh, with each other as far as like taking back plays and stuff. We're just kind of playing for fun and trying to figure out if the decks are actually good. So something just to throw out there for you guys watching. So here, yeah, I definitely like this, uh, putting the metal in the discard. That way you can put it back into the deck, but super odd, uh, because we're gonna play Professor Sycamore here. So it definitely seems like a bit of a better play. And just gonna play Sycamore, refreshing my hand, drawing a fresh hand of seven. And yet again, no psychic energy, which is slightly annoying, but we do get Parallel City, which is kind of nice, at least that definitely is a good card against Zoroark decks. Uh, it's going to force him to discard until he has three bench Pokemon. And here might just have to pass, unfortunately. So let's see what Brandon's going to do here. He has an Ultra Ball. So it looks like he's going to Ultra Ball, getting rid of a Puzzle Time and a Float Stone. Puzzle Time, definitely not a card you like to get rid of a lot of the times. And here he's also going to play a Mallow. So that's going to allow him to get two cards out of his deck and put them right on top of his deck. Now, even though he will be able to get a double Carvus energy, I'm not sure how much I like this play. He does have a Cynthia in hand. I think I would have preferred just discarding the Mallow uh, and then and then just playing the Cynthia. I, I think I would have liked that actually a lot better here. But nevertheless, this will at least guarantee him a way to attack this turn. But unfortunately, he is at a zero card hand. So, um... You know, I guess Brandon was just thinking, you know what, I just really need to attack this turn. Like, I need to put all of my eggs in this one basket and uh, start putting on some pressure. So here, I'm going to get down another Float Stone and just play a Cynthia. So hopefully I can draw into some Psychic Energy, uh, just because that's what I need to fuel my attacks. And uh, one thing that's important to note in my list, I actually have four Metal Energies and eight Psychic Energies. So kind of weird, I haven't been able to draw into those as well. Okay, we do finally get a Psychic Energy. That is definitely going to be good here. So I can discard that, probably grab another Malamar just to uh, thin out the deck and put a Psychic Energy in the discard pile. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a way to actually take a knockout this turn, which is quite unfortunate, I must say. So I have some options. We can attach the Psychic Energy out of the discard pile onto Ultra Necrozma and just do 100 damage, or could potentially... Um, so it could do that, or you know what, we could actually attach the energy to Lele. I think that actually might be a better play here. And, oh, actually there's a couple of kind of interesting plays we could make here. So gonna, yeah, so we're gonna attach to Lele instead of the active and then accelerate that psychic energy onto it. And now we can do 100 damage, I'm sorry, uh, 80 damage to this Zorark GX here. So I'm going to soften that up. One thing I actually could have done is use Tapu Cure GX. I think that actually would have been kind of nice here as well. Uh, Tapu Cure GX will allow me to heal all damage from two of my bench Pokemon. So actually, that might have been maybe a better consideration, I think. Here, Brand's just going to end both of us into a new hand. And my hand is trash. <laughs> Still no Psychic Energy. Had that one last turn, but beyond that, I don't have another one to work with. And here, Brandon is going to... Uh, start putting on some pressure onto this Lele of his own. So I draw Float Stone for turn. That doesn't really help me out too much here. So what do we do? What do we do? Um, I think the only real play that I have at my disposal right now is to... I think what we do is we retreat this Lele, discarding the Psychic Energy, and then we use Malmar to get that energy onto Necrozma and then Guzma up this Frog Deer to take Knockout. I think that's probably our best play that we have access to. Uh, we could, of course, take out a Zerua, but he already has the energy on Frog Deer. He already has, uh, you know, it's not a Froakie anymore, it's a Frog Deer, so it's only one step away from being a Greninja, so I think that's probably our best play, I think. So here, just gonna retreat into Malamar. Uh, like I said, that way we can get this energy back on the field, and then play Guzma to bring up this Frog Deer and take a Knockout here. So hopefully the prize card uh, that I get off this knockout will be good. I need something here. My hand is not the best. Okay, so we get Psychic Energy. That's actually pretty good. So maybe that actually explains why I've not been able to find my Psychic Energy that have been hiding in the prizes. And here, you know, Brandon's bouncing right back from that knockout. He has another Froakie, he has Aqua Patch. Uh, luckily, we did take out the Frog Deer. He did have Greninja GX in hand, so that will buy us a turn of Greninja coming into play. And it looks like... 
Brandon's contemplating a Guzma if he's getting down that float stone. And here he has Time Revolve, so he's going to flip two coins. And he hit double heads. That is pretty big here as well. So Time Revolve, not a card we see too often. Uh, but for you guys who are unfamiliar with it, you get flip two coins for each head. Search your deck for an evolution card. Put it into your hand. You know, a lot of times these Zorark variants, they'll play something like Evo Soda to get out their evolutions quicker. But since Frogadier and Greninja GX, uh, their abilities can only be activated when played from hand. Time Revolve is actually probably a little better in this specific type of deck. And here, Brandon has the Guzma, and he'll be able to take out that Ultra Necrozma, taking the first GX knockout here. And here, luckily, I do have an end to work with. I do have a draw supporter. Uh, I do have a Guzma as well, could work with. And so I have a Floatstone here. So actually, if I have... Okay, yeah, what I can actually do is I have Choice Band in hand. I can attach Choice Band. I can play this Mystery Treasure, discarding that Psychic Energy, and then dis and then accelerate two Psychics out of the discard uh, to this Ultra Necrozma. Or actually, we only need the one here because the Zoroark already has 80 damage on it. So I kind of like this. We're going to get down uh, a fresh Ultra Necrozma here. We're going to play Field Blower, getting rid of both of these tool cards. Definitely is going to be big. Uh, it's always nice taking away your opponents out to uh, retreating for free. So I'm just going to play and it's going to put Brandon at a lower hand, but he has two Zorark GX in play, so even if he doesn't have the best hand, he can still potentially just draw right out of this. Alrighty, so let's see. Going to use the first Malamar to accelerate his Psychic Energy, and then, like I said, we still have access to one more ability, so what we can probably do is just put it on this other Malamar, or I'm sorry, on this other Ultra Necrozma on the bench. So that seems good. Start to, uh, you know, power that one up uh, after this first one or might go down. So. so what we can do is, yeah, just discard the one Psychic Energy with the Choice Band. It's going to be 130, which is just enough to take a knockout here. All right, so let's see how Brandon is going to respond this turn. He's going to trade away a Zorark GX. Going to get down another Froakie. Yeah, it's definitely going to be good. Okay, so he ha does have Double Chorus Energy. He's going to... Trade away the Greninja. He kind of recognized, oh wait, I don't want to get rid of the Frogadier. That's going to help me here. So actually, he can not potentially take a knockout. If Brandon gets lucky enough, if he gets a full bench with a Choice Band and Kukui, he can actually take a knockout here. Which is kind of scary, to be honest. Uh, because if he does get a Choice Band at Zorark GX with the Riot of Speeding, it's going to be 150. Uh, the Frogadier already put 20 damage on this Ultra Necrozma, that's 170, and he has the Professor Kukui, and he hits the Choice Band, so super, super lucky. I think that was literally the last one in his deck, too. So uh, definitely not very happy about that. <laughs> I was pretty confident this Ultra Necrozma was going to be safe this turn. But here, he did actually whiff the, uh, the last basic he needed to take a knockout, so that's actually pretty relevant, but... So let's see here. What do we do? What do we do? Unfortunately, this Ultra Necrozma is stuck in the active spot. If I have a Guzma, though, that actually would help me get around that. So let's see. Okay, I actually do have Guzma in hand, so that's pretty nice. So just going to grab, uh, discarding this Psychic Energy, just to put it in the discard, and going to grab Dawnwings Necrozma. Typically a card I would actually really like to play, but since it's weak to dark, kind of a little scared to bench that in this matchup. So yeah, we can definitely get some more Psychic Energy in play here, and then play Guzma, bring up this uh, Zorark GX, and take a knockout on it. So that is going to limit the amount of trades that uh, Brandon's going to have next turn. I think it's going to make it a little bit harder for him to take a one-hit knockout. Uh, if he does have something like a, uh, whatchamacallit, a, uh, like a Greninja or a, another Frogadier, that actually would kind of be problematic for me that would make it pretty easy for him to take a return KO here so I just have one prize left in here oh god this is actually pretty scary so Brandon has the breakpoint Greninja and so here he's going to Ultra Ball yeah this is actually a pretty scary turn so he can actually grab Frogadier place two damage counters on the bench Ultra Necrozma knocking it out and then he can actually promote this Greninja and use Shadow Stitching to t turn off my abilities for a turn, which is super scary. And he's going to hit me with the end of one. So I'm, yeah, this is, this is bad. This is pretty bad. <laughs> um, just have to 
like I said, Brian just needs the shadow stitching, and I think that will kind of put him in a good spot here. You know, even if even if he doesn't, I still have this Ultra Necrozma stranded in the active spot. But here, Brandon is going to retreat. And let's see. So he is going to use Shadow Stitching. That's going to turn off my abilities this turn. And here I'm just going to play Cynthia. So I was fortunate enough to get that off my six cards. And actually, I, I remember this. I was like, hmm, should I actually even bench Mew here? And I'm kind of thinking is, or what I'm kind of thinking right now is, if I get Tapu Lele and Field Blower floatstone i can actually tapu cure if i hit a psychic energy as well so it's a lot to ask for but i think that would be pretty good if i'm able to actually hit all of that and unfortunately i whiff what i need here so that's actually pretty bad so what what can i do I can get down a Psychic Energy here and manually retreat this Ultra Necrozma. And I think I need to just sacrifice something that only gives up one prize. Serum and Ultra Ball. Uh, probably going to grab an Inke here, or probably just grab the Mew even. So I, I like either of those plays. Either of those I think will be fine. So... I'm not sure if it matters. Well, if I go for the Mew, that actually could be good because then if for some reason, if Brandon does not take a knockout on it, I will have free retreat. So I think that's fine at this point. So what I can do is I can attach that energy, manually retreat, and then just promote this Mew. Now, the only thing that is unfortunate is that Brandon can actually just kind of sit back behind this Greninja and just keep shadow stitching until he's ready to win the game. So... If he doesn't have game this turn, he's content with just shadow stitching yet again, preventing me from being able to use my abilities and close out this game here. Uh, so Brandon has the double puzzle of time, which is scary. So here it looks like he's going to go for a Mew EX, probably just to put it on the bench, and then a Guzma as well. So here he has the Guzma. Uh, he has the choice band. So here he can just take a knockout on Ultra Necrozma and win the first game of the series. So super, super close game. You know, both of us kind of had a little bit of an awkward start. My, As you can see, I was having a pretty hard time finding my psychic energies for the first half of the game. And then uh, Brandon similarly had to play down to like a zero card hand that one turn as well. And uh, there was a turn where he whiffed like a Pokemon to take a knockout. So kind of a, a little bit of an awkward exchange in that game. But you know what, guys? This is going to be a best two out of three series. So plenty of other chances to show off how these decks are going to work. So hopefully the second game will go a little bit smoother for both of us here. So like I said, I felt like this matchup should be pretty 50-50-ish. Uh, and that's kind of how it wound up being. You know, I was able to take a couple one-hit knockouts throughout the game. But similarly, Brandon was able to do the same between his Professor Kukwis and his Frogadiers and Greninja GX and all that type of stuff. Uh, he was able to similarly respond back with one-hit knockouts of his own. So that uh, you can see the strength of the Breakpoint Greninja <laughs> in that game there. Uh, definitely if he didn't have... The Greninja to do Shadow Stitching, I would have been in a much better spot. But, um, so yeah, let's see how this one is going to go here. Alrighty, and since I lost the first game in the series, I will probably decide to go first. Uh, typically, whoever loses each game in the series does get to choose which player goes first in the following one. So here, I'm going to open up Double Inke, which is definitely pretty good. Oh, and, uh... I guess I forgot to draw for Mulligan or something like that, but I don't know. Anyway, it's going to play this Mystery Treasure, discarding this Dawnwings Necrozma GX. Like I mentioned earlier, it is a card I would normally like to actually play down because it has this ability Invasion. Uh, if it's on your bench, you get to make it your active Pokemon, similarly to the old uh, Keldeo EX from back in the day. So a lot of synergy with this archetype, but against Zora Arctex, it's a little too risky, I think, to bench just because it does give up an easy... Uh, two prizes. So here I'm just going to get the Ultra Necrozma and play Cynthia. That seems pretty good. You know, I could have gone for the first turn Bridget, but I think I'd rather get down in energy this turn. I already have the two Inkes, so honestly there's not too much else I really, really want anyways. Okay, so I do have a Psychic Energy. I also have an Ultra Ball though, so I can just dump this Psychic Energy uh, into the discard pile. So I could, uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think that's fine. So here I can probably grab, I think another Inkay could be good. 
or maybe even Mew, but yeah. So I, I like this, getting down the third ink. I wanna be able to, uh, you know, discard three energy every time I attack with Ultra Necrozma and be able to accelerate three more Psychic Energies back into play uh, at some point as well. So here, Brandon just has a Cynthia. Unfortunately, he does not have that first turn Bridget. I'm sure that's kind of what he would prefer it here, but uh, unfortunately, he did not get that. But let's see if he can grab some more basics just by, you know, going the old school route, just drawing, uh, just refreshing his hand with the draw support. And his hand looks terrible. He has three double colorless energies and like a Greninja and a Cynthia. So this is pretty bad for him, actually. So I'm going to get out a Malamar and just going to play an end here. And I felt terrible because uh, he had such a terrible hand here. Uh, you know, if I had known that, I probably would have just Sycamored, but uh, I just assumed his hand was okay. Uh, typically, you don't expect your opponent's hand to be three DCEs and a Bridget. But, you know, the game's still early. It's still anyone's game at this point. I'm not too worried about it, to be honest. So here, you know, I actually would have had a decent hand had I had a Floatstone. A little bit unfortunate that I did with that. So I can get down a Metal Energy at the very least on this Ultra Necrozma. I think that'll be fine. I do have the Mystery Treasure. I could play it and get like another Malamar, but I really don't have a way to draw cards next turn. So I think I'd rather save the Mystery Treasure in case I need to grab a Lele to grab a real draw supporter. So let's see here. At least I do have some energy finally on this Ultra Necrozma. Next turn, I am kind of threatening a knockout here. Just debating if I do want to play this uh, Mysterious Treasure or not, though. But again, I think it's probably better just to hang on to it until next turn. So that's what I'm going to do here. And looks like Brandon finally got that Bridget <laughs> that he missed on his first turn. So, you know, he is a turn late with it. But, you know, nevertheless, it's going to help him start getting a little bit better set up here. So he's going to grab, it looks like, two Zeruas and a Froakie. I think that's good. He probably realizes this Froakie in the active spot is probably just going to get knocked out. So he wants to still have an extra one on his bench ready to go at some point as well. Okay, going to get down a double Chorus energy and then uh, just do another 10 damage with Froakie's attack here. So I actually draw Cynthia. So that actually kind of changes what I might do this turn. So actually what I think I might do here is play the Mystery Treasure, grab a Lele, but I think I actually might Guzma this turn and take out that Zerua that has the double colorless energy. So I kind of like that play actually. And the next turn I have the Cynthia ready to go. So taking out Zerua's I think are going to be priority because that's, you know, Brandon's whole draw engine of his deck and he already committed a double colorless energy to it. Had he not put down the DCE, I probably wouldn't play the Guzma. I'd probably just play uh, like a Sycamore or just play the Cynthia that was in my hand and uh, take a knockout on the active Froki. But I feel like taking out a double colorless energy is going to be a little bit too tempting to pass on. And here I'm just going to actually use Tapu Lele to take a knockout. Uh, that way I don't have to actually burn my energy and strand this Ultra Necrozma in the active spot. Okay, and here Brandon is just going to play an in and refresh both of her hands. So I'm only going to get five cards since I did take a knockout on my previous turn, but Brandon is going to get a fresh hand of six. So I'm sure he's going to be looking for some Zorark GXs here to start putting on some pressure of his own. And actually, if Brandon gets like Zorark GX, like... Choice Band, Frogadier, this type of Lele is actually going down. And he actually gets two uh, Zorak GXs, that's pretty big. Oh, this is, yet again, a pretty big draw from him. He has double puzzles, so he can actually get double Karos Energy. If he can find himself a Frogadier in Choice Band, he's gonna be good to go. And yeah, so he, yeah, I think, well, no. Does he have the Choice Band? It's hard for me to tell. He's going to play an Ultra Ball, getting rid of Floatstone and a Puzzle Time, grabbing the Frogadier. So I think he did get the... Okay, so maybe he did not get the uh, the Choice Band here, then, if that's the case. But here he's going to put the two damage counters on the Bench uh, Ultra Necrozma, and then just swing on this Tapu Lele for 120. Here I'm just going to play a Cynthia, and what I really need this turn is a Choice Band, or a way to get a Psychic Energy on this Ultra Necrozma. That way I can take a knockout on this active Zorark GX. So I've already gone, I 
gone through like four psychic energy, so I'm not sure if my odds of drawing into them are that good here. And I draw psychic energy, but no way to actually put it in the discard pile, which is pretty unfortunate, I have to say. So what I actually might do is, you know, I could just attack into this Zor Arc GX and soften it up a little bit, but but then he just takes a knockout on this Tapu Lele, so I'm not sure how much I like that play. What I think I might do is actually retreat into Inke. This might seem really weird, but what I can do is actually... I could put Zorark asleep, actually, because Inke's first attack, uh, just for a single Psychic Energy, puts your opponent's active Pokemon asleep. So, yeah, I could potentially do that. But here, I'm just going to pass, apparently, and... Uh, not sure how much I like that, actually, because I didn't attach for turn. I don't believe. I could be wrong. So I, I could have actually put that Psychic Energy down somewhere. But, um... So hopefully it doesn't come back to bite me here. But I really don't think it would be a big deal because... I don't know. It's probably okay, though. It's only going to give up one prize. It's going to force Brandon into a seven prize game. So let's see what all he's going to do here. So I see double puzzle of time, so he could play both of those. So let's see. Looks like he's eyeing himself down a floatstone. And maybe an ultra ball. So let's see what route he is gonna go here. Okay, so it looks like he's gonna get back a puzzle of time and a DCE. Uh, that way he can double puzzle again at some point in the game. Uh, but at least in the process, he did grab himself a double Chorus Energy. And here he's going to play uh, Guzma, targeting down this Ultra Necrozma. And then he's going to swing on it for, I think it's 120. So unfortunately, he is going to be a little bit shy of taking a knockout here. But, uh, you know, it's not even that big of a deal for Brandon because with all of his abilities that he has, uh, he can just finish off this Ultra Necrozma with his Greninjas at some point as well. Sarah can attach that Psychic Energy I had from hand. And then just Sycamore. Unfortunately, I had to get rid of another Sycamore uh, in the process. But that's okay. We have... You gotta do what you gotta do to refresh your hand sometimes. And uh, so let's see. So I can definitely take a knockout on this Zorark GX this turn. So that seems good. Gonna blow all three of those Psychic Energies. Going down to three prizes here. But, um, you know... Brandon is probably going to also kind of catch up in the prize trade this turn as well, uh, just because of uh, his Greninja line. If he can get actually, if he can get Greninja GX, he can actually take a knockout on this active Ultra Necrozma, forcing me to promote something else and then attack me for turn, if he has double Colorless Energy, of course, too. And right now, Brandon is still searching his deck with Tapu Lele GX, probably just deciding what draw support he wants to go for. Here it looks like he's opting for the Mallow, kind of saying, you know what, I just want to guarantee what I need this turn. I think that's going to be best. He only has the one Zorark GX right now as well, so he only has one trade. Uh, he, Unlike most turns, if he has like two or three Zoroarks, he can't just play a draw support and then trade a bunch to keep drawing extra stuff. He doesn't have that many outs into drawing into what he needs, so playing the Mallow I think is definitely uh, pretty decent here. And it looks like he might be going for a Double Colorless Energy and a Greninja GX, it looks like. So, okay, he's going to discard that Aqua Patch to trade into this Greninja. So he's going to put a 3 on the... Oh, on the Bench Layla. Okay, I forgot. Uh, he would actually be a little short if he put the damage on this active Necrozma. I was thinking it had 170 hit points, not 190. So, here he's going to put the damage on the bench and then use Greninja's regular attack to do 110 and shuffle it and all cards attached to it back into his deck. That's going to allow him to reset up this Greninja line at some point as well. So here I have a pretty big hand just trying to figure out what route I want to go uh, with my turn here. If I'm able to actually Guzma up this Zorark, that would actually be pretty big here as well. That's his only source of draw power right now. So I'm going to play Rescue Stretcher, getting that Necrozma back on the field. And it looks like I'm thinking about putting down a Floatstone. Seems okay. Going to get down a Choice Band. Okay, so I'm probably going to dump my whole hand with a Sycamore here. Just trying to play down what I can before I play that Sycamore. So going to get rid of a Malamar line, a Psychic Energy, and a Field Blower, it looks like. 
Okay, so I have a metal energy. That's what I needed here. Uh, that way I can take a knockout with this Ultra Necrozma. So I specifically put the Floatstone on this Ultra Necrozma with the metal energy because I was kind of banking on uh, being able to attack with it this turn, discarding my Psychic Energy, and then next turn being able to freely retreat into another Ultra Necrozma to take my last two prizes. So here, like I said, I'm going to retreat. And like I said, I can just discard the one single Psychic Energy to take a knockout here. So I'm going to do that, knocking out that Froki. And it looks like Brand's going to promote a Zorark GX. So here he's going to trade away Bridget, drawing two cards. He does get another Zorark GX, so that is pretty big as well. So he does have an Ultra Ball. If he has a Tapu Lele in deck, he could go for that and refresh his hand. And so let's see. He's going to go for an end here. I think that's fine. You know, unlike his deck, I actually don't have a way to draw cards outside of my draw supporters. So N actually hurts me a lot more than it hurts Brandon. But one thing that is good about this deck, I can sometimes just play from the field uh, just because you already have Malamars in play. As long as you have like a Metal Energy to use at some point, you're normally okay. So here Brandon is going to pick off that Tapu Lele that had damage on it thanks to Frogadier. And now we are tied up on prizes. And so here Brandon is just going to retreat. And he's kind of trying to sacrifice this uh, Zerua here uh, to kind of force me into a seven prize game. And actually, I remember here, I had kind of a brain fart. <laughs> I forgot that I can just Guzma for game. I do have a Guzma in hand. Uh, my active Necrozma has a metal energy on it. I, I forgot that Guzma will put it on the bench to allow me to use Malamar. So I can actually just Guzma for game. I can pick off Zorark or I can pick off Tapu Lele. Uh, but here I can Guzma, putting this Ultra Necrozma uh, back on the bench to allow me to accelerate energy to it. So that seems pretty good. You can get all three on that Ultra Necrozma. And then we can discard all three to take a knockout on that Tapu Lele for the game. So I'm going to tie up the series now. We're going to go to a game three. So let's see how uh, you know both, the, both these decks are going to fare in this last game. So once again, pretty close game actually. Uh, both of us were down to two prize cards, but I was fortunate enough to get the uh, final knockout there before Brandon was able to. So. Uh, but if the first and second games are any indication, you know, game three is pretty much anyone's game at this point. So we'll have to see uh, how this is going to go. N is definitely going to be a big card, I feel like, because like I just mentioned, my deck is not as, you know, easily able to bounce back from like a low end to like one or two as Brandon's is. So that could potentially be one way he can kind of, you know, turn the tides back in his favor if I do manage to get ahead, uh, you know, before him. So beyond that, I'm not sure how much we can really adjust our strategies here. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to really make great use of the Mew from Fates Collide. That is normally a card I actually really like using, but against this Greninja deck where they can place damage counters to pick off low HP Pokemon, I'm kind of afraid to bench the Mew a lot of the time here. I just haven't had the right turn to really make use of it, but that is actually a card I would like to use if the opportunity presents itself as well. Okay, so ooh, Brandon has the Bridget just right away in his hand. Doesn't even need Tapu Lele or anything like that. So here I'd imagine we'll probably see a couple Zeruas and another Froki. Uh, kind of like in game one, I think that's probably your ideal Bridget targets the two Zeruas, then just one Froki. You can, once you get some Zoraks in play, you can draw into more Froki, so I think that's fine. So here Brandon's just taking a look through his deck, see what all he has access to throughout the course of this game, trying to see probably what's prized just checking for important cards and things like that. So if he has a water energy, he could probably get that down. I think if you have DCE, you probably just hang on to it. Oh, and he actually does have the water energy too, so that's pretty nice. That's honestly probably your perfect turn one for his deck. So similarly, I have an Ultra Ball, getting rid of a Dawnwings Necrozma and a Psychic Energy, which is pretty nice actually. Both are cards I want in the discard pile. Unfortunately, Dawnwings Necrozma isn't the best in this matchup. Uh, definitely a card that is really good against most other decks, but definitely a card I really just don't want to see. And okay, so just trying to think. I definitely want to go for Tapu Lele, but just trying to figure out what do I actually get? I don't have a draw supporter in hand, but I do have an Ultra Ball. So next turn, I could still potentially go for another Tapu Lele here. 
and uh, refresh my hand if I don't top deck one. So I think just going for the Bridget is fine here. Now, unfortunately, I do run the risk of having to bench a second Lele, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but in a deck like this where all of your bench space is really precious, that would actually be kind of bad. But you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna risk it here and just say, you know what? Hopefully, I can top deck into that draw supporter. That way, I don't have to Lele again next turn. But uh, just kind of want to ensure that I can get down two more Inkays, just because this active one, if I had to bet, would probably get knocked out from a Zor Arc on the next turn. And so I'm going to get down this Metal Energy as well. So again, kind of a pretty good first turn from my deck as well. So let's see, Brandon's going to get down a Frog of the Year, targeting down this alternate Crossman, just playing end. So I actually am pretty thankful there. I don't have to play another Tapu Lele. I can save that bench spot for something a little bit more ideal. So Brandon, he's going to be looking for a double Colorless Energy and a Zor Arc. If he hits those, he's going to be in good shape here. And my hand has a ton of support, so I definitely won't have to bench Lele uh, next turn. So let's see what he is going to do. So it looks like Brandon is going to Ultra Ball. Again, we have a Floatstone and a Frogadier going for Zorark GX. He still needs a double colorless energy to take a knockout, though. That's the big piece of the puzzle he is still missing. But now that he has Zorark online, he can use Trade. So it looks like he's... Okay, it looks like he's just going to pass, just kind of saving the resources in his hand for next turn. So I'm actually okay with that. If I can keep my Inkays alive, that is definitely going to be preferable. So here I'm going to play... Okay, it looks like I'm using Mystery Treasure. Here I'm going to Field Blower, getting rid of that uh, Choice Band, and then playing in. So I definitely want to keep those Choice Bands off the field, uh, just because between Choice Bands and all of the... Uh, frogs that Brandon plays, those are going to be the ways he can knock me out in one hit, so I want to kind of take those options away from him if possible. Alright, so let's see what I can manage to get off of this end here. Unfortunately, just some metal energy, no psychic energy, it's definitely not what I want to see here. Alright, so at least I do get the parallel stay down, that is going to be good, that is going to limit Brandon's bench size a little bit. So I am able to get down a Psychic Energy on this Ultra Necrozma. I'm going to get down a Metal Energy on this Tapu Lele as well, and then just retreat into it. That kind of seems like a weird play probably, but if I left the Malamar in the active spot, it might go down if Brandon has like DCE, Field Lower, uh, and a Basic. So I really just didn't want to risk that. So, um, you know, th this Tapu Lele can actually take a hit, and I have the Metal Energy on it, so I can actually retreat it next turn if I do decide to attack with Ultra Necrozma as well. But Brandon did get a Greninja GX online, so he was able to get another three damage counters on this Ultra Necrozma, which is a little bit scary for me. So Brandon's going to go for a Timer Ball. He gets a Heads and then a Tails, but that's okay. At least he does get one Evolution Pokemon uh, from Timer Ball. He's going to get himself another Zorark GX here. So he's probably just looking for a double color center. That's the big thing. Uh, he's really been missing the past couple turns. So let's see, what is he going to trade away? I think the water energy is probably a safe target, but here, oh, he did have Bridget. That's, I think that's actually probably a little bit better. Uh, pretty much a dead card right now. So here's gonna get down a psychic energy and just pass. So kind of a missed opportunity there for Brandon. Um, so here what I can do is I can get down the psychic energy and actually if i hit choice band i can actually just take a knockout on this zor arc gx which actually would be pretty big here that's going to limit uh brandon's potential draw power a little bit so i just need choice band and i'm good to go i don't think i've actually discarded any just yet so i should still have both of them in the deck oh and here you can see the second card uh off the cynthia was a choice band so that's definitely what i like to see here i'm going to be able to take the first knockout and start to get ahead in the game a little bit here so going to burn both Psychic Energy, that'll be just enough to take a knockout once you factor in Choice Ban. And here it looks like Brandon is going to promote this uh, Greninja GX, so it looks like he might be thinking about attacking with it. And here he's going to trade away a Bridget, use Rescue Stretcher to get himself another Zor Arc. so that's actually pretty nice for Brandon here. He can probably grab himself a Double Colorless Energy if he chooses to, maybe even a Field Blower to get rid of this Parallel City and a Floatstone, I think that would be good. Um, 
or just get a, another water energy if he wants to attack with Greninja. So let's see what he's going to get here off of this Mallow. Okay, so he's going to he's going to trade away the N. I think that's okay. Okay, he's going to get himself down a Froki, it looks like. And right now, so he has an option. He can attack for 110. Okay, it looks like he's changing his mind about what he wants. I think he uh, miscalculated his damage here. So I, I told him, you know what, man? Go for it. That's fine. So yeah, he definitely wants the Choice Band here. That way he can take a knockout. All right, so luckily I do have another Ultra and Crossman. Here I actually have a Super Rod as well. Going to get back some of my Metal Energy. Definitely important cards in this uh, in this situation. And here I'm actually going to play B-String. This is a spicy card that's in the deck. If your opponent has three or four prizes, you search your deck for uh, two basic energies and attach them to one of your Ultra Beasts. So here I'm pretty much good to go. All I need to do is hit a Psychic Energy or a Malamar off of this N. And then I should be good to go as far as taking a knockout on this Greninja GX. Because right now I can get one Psychic Energy out of the discard pile. Like I said, I just need either a Psychic Energy or another Malamar to uh, get the final one uh, into play to take a knockout here. And I whiff. So unfortunately, this is actually this is actually pretty bad, I hate to say. So this is, I think, a really pivotal moment in the game. Being able, to, If I was able to take a knockout on this Greninja GX, that would actually be pretty massive here. So what I might do here is actually just get down a Psychic Energy and then maybe retreat into Inkei to, to just sacrifice it. Or actually, looks like, yeah, I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to instead put the energy on the Inkei and actually try to put this Greninja asleep. So it looks like Brandon is going to have to flip. And unfortunately, he, he does stay asleep. So I'm actually pretty thankful for that. He does, however, have Field Blower, which is going to be pretty big here. It's going to allow him to get rid of uh, the Float Stone. And more important for him, the Parallel City. And as you can see, he can already get down another Zerua, getting that in play. And here he's going to trade away an N. However, if he, he does have Ultra Ball, he could actually play Guzma. Okay, so, oh, he does have Guzma in hand already, so that is fine. And he has double chorus energy, so he is going to be able to get the first hit in on this Ultra Necrozma, which is pretty big. Like I said, I, I think that was a big missed opportunity for my deck that last turn. So let's see, how am I going to respond here? So I'm just going to play the Guzma here, unfortunately. Or, I'm sorry, the Sycamore here, unfortunately. I would have preferred the Guzma, probably, uh, and take another knockout that way. Uh, but... Unfortunately, that is not the case. So this turn, I might have to just... Uh, I might have to just do 100 to this Zorark, which would be definitely a bit of a shame. So I'm not sure what all I have in hand. Let's see, I do have a Rescue Stretcher, I think it is. So if this Ultra Necrozma does get knocked out, I could just get it back. Um, and I could attack with Lele as well. That is also an option here, I think. So it's hard to say what the right play here is. Uh, I think maybe I could just retreat into Lele and then swing on this Zorark. Uh, that way I can keep this Ultra Necrozma out of harm's way and deny Brandon a knockout on his next turn. So I think I'm going to do that. Oh, well, here's what I can do. Yeah, I can actually just do a hundred here to this yeah to the active Zorak that's fine then I can actually clean up a knockout with Tapper Lele on the next turn as well if I choose to so let's see Brandon is going to trade away a Guzma here I'm gonna play Professor Kukui which is a little scary because now he, he can take a knockout well actually no he would have been able to take a knockout either way this turn so doesn't matter too much, but here Brandon is going to go down to two prize. This is definitely pretty scary. I think missing that turn uh, of an energy to take a knockout on that Greninja GX, kind of coming back to bite me here because now I'm the one who's behind on the prize trade. Well, I'd really like, I'd really love to end and take a knockout this turn, but I'm just not sure if I have the means of doing it. So here I have another Ultra Necrozma. And just trying to figure out what do I do this turn? <laughs> 
Uh, I do have Sycamore. I do have Cynthia. No N. Like I said, I wish I had maybe like an N and a Metal Energy in hand. Then I would just probably just do that. Uh, that'd be my ideal situation here. But I think I just really need to take a knockout. But here I'm just going to play the Cynthia. I think maybe in hindsight I would have preferred just playing the Sycamore. Uh, because I really need to guarantee a Metal Energy here. So I need Metal Energy and choice band I think or metal energy and another Malamar but here I'm gonna play field board getting rid of choice band and floatstone definitely cards I'm happy to get rid of okay so I do get the metal energy which is nice oh wait I forgot Zorak has a hundred damage on what am I talking about guys <laughs> my mistake there so I don't even need quite that many cards to pull this off so what I'm gonna do here is Use Malamar to start powering up this Lele to take a knockout with it. If I were to attack with this Ultra Necrozma, uh, I'd be kind of in bad shape because I would discard my energy and then it would be straining in the active spot with no real way to uh, do anything with it for next turn. But here I'm going to Ultra Ball. So I'm going to get another Malamar into play. So I'm going to get rid of the Lele and the Mute. Both seems fine. I have a full bench, so... Um, you know, if Brian's taking a knockout on, on anything, he's probably winning either way, so I probably won't have a chance to actually bench either of those cards uh, for the rest of this game. So you're going to get another Malamar into play. And I guess just checking what all I've used, how many energy I have. But here I'm going to do Energy Drive. And here, I, I remember we miscalculated the, the math for... Tepulele, so we moved around the energy, so I apologize guys, normally I don't uh, take back this many things in these testing rounds of videos, but like I said, these games are just for fun, uh, just to kind of figure out if the decks are good, so like I said, me and Brandon, we're not being very strict with each other as far as taking back stuff and things like that, so uh, hopefully that's not too bothersome though, <laughs> um, but here it looks like Brandon has the choice ban, has Kukui, so I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to have a game there, because with Greenwich GX, he'd be doing 140, Plus Kukui would be 160. And I think he got the Frogadier as well. So yeah, he basically had everything he needed to win that turn. So Brandon is going to actually take the series. So congrats to him for knocking me off my uh, pedestal. It's been a while since I lost a series on testing ground. So <laughs> you, you got to lose eventually. Uh, but yeah, ha happy to be able to show off these new deck ideas for you guys. And definitely stay tuned. We're going to have the deck profiles being posted in the coming days. So definitely stay tuned for when those go up. But as usual, guys, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you can support this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it would mean a lot. But with that, I appreciate you watching and we'll see you for the next one.